I have never had such pain. Well, I keep telling you, Nick, why don't you go in the dentist and have him yank it out? Well, maybe it don't have to be yanked. Well, then what's it ache for? This bad weather always sits in that bad tool. Well, now, look, we're here. It won't take but a minute to go in and have it yanked out. Toothache medicine. the same. How's it feel? Mm. Well, now that the whiskey's got it numb, won't you go have it yanked? You won't feel a thing. <laughs> yeah, you gentlemen look in the prime of life and physical fortitude. Now, how'd you like to earn an easy five dollars? Doing what? Practicing the manly art of self-defense. Test your strength, improve your skill. Jack Kilbane versus Sam Driscoll, the Boston Terriers. Hey. Which one are you? Well, me neither. Terrence O'Rafferty, manager and trainer of Jack Kilbane, who once stepped into the ring with the immortal John L. Sullivan. Really? Yes, gents. The fight of the century, sponsored by the Stockton Club at $50 a ticket. Jack Kilbane versus Sam Driscoll, bare knuckle, fight to the finish. Oh, it'll be the biggest private boxing match ever held west of the Mississippi. Marcus of Queen Barry Rolls, that's no gouging or biting or yeah. kicking, eh? Hey? Now, are there any men among you that would like to earn five dollars as a sparring partner? And the first man that stays three rounds with Jack Kilbane wins this here gold piece. Eh? Oh, now, surely there must be some among you that have done some fighting. You can't all be lacking in the qualities of manhood. There you go, Nick. You get your tooth knocked out, earn five dollars, and save a trip to the dentist. <coughs> Heath, when are you going to learn you're not funny? Oh, he talks. And, and I thought your friend was deep and dumb. No. <laughs> Give me another shot. How about that, Nick Barkley? You're always stomping and throwing your weight around. Well, now, why don't you mind your own business, Jonas? You just happen to be a little bit sore because I fired you off the ranch. Will I do the same thing again if I ever see you put a club to a horse? And don't you ever forget it. Ooh. Now, here's the man offering you a fight. How about it? Oh. <laughs> it, 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 it. <laughs> Didn't want to start no arguments. <laughs> if Stockton doesn't have a man to go three rounds with Jack Kilbane, I'll just keep me gold piece. <laughs> we'll send to Sacramento. For some men. Well, I guess it's up to me, Nick. Where'd I sign up? Well, now, what do you want to do that for? What do you want to fight for? I used to box on the army. What do you get for it? You get your brains knocked in while some Yahoo watches. Well, it might be a shame to turn the man down. People might think there ain't no pride here in Stockton. Pride? Besides the ideal of a Barkley knocking out the great Jack Kilbane, that kind of tickles me. Right here? Mm. Now, wait a minute. Anybody who's going to fight in this family, it's going to be me, Nick Barkley. Oh, fine, fine. I'll see you at Brown's Warehouse in 20 minutes. It's gone. Uh -huh.
Nick, I was just having fun. I tricked you into this. Now, let's get out of here. I signed up. Well, they can get somebody else. That guy's nobody to fool with. There we go. There we go. Easy. Up. Ah. Well, uh, thank you very much, my friend. But I'm afraid you don't win the five dollars. It's three rounds you got to stay. Three. <laughs> That's right. All right, Mr. Barkley, you're next. Now, let, let's see what you can do. Well, uh, he hits pretty hard. I may not be able to be much competition. You wouldn't be trying to back out on me now, would you? I mean, uh, no, no, no. Nick, you don't have to prove anything. Use your head. Can't use my head. Marcus of Queensbury rules you can't butt a man. Can't use my head. Jack Kilbane. Uh, Nick. Nick Barkley. There's my brother Heath. Heath Barkley. Mr. Rafferty, you, you met Heath. Did you ever fight before? And me? Uh, no, well, just uh, army tournament stuff. Nothing too much. Hey, mister. Hmm? I'd like you to try to box Jack. Yes. Make a move at you. Yeah. Well, no, no, don't be trying to take him out with one punch. Oh, no, no. Well, that way you may last a few rounds, right. eh? Right. Now, Jack, I'd like you to move around a bit. Hold up on a punch. Make it last a little while. Yeah, sharpen up your timing. You need it, eh? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's pretty good punching, cowboy. I get even better. Nick! Nick, that's enough. Now you're gonna come to me. You better get the seat of your pants ready then, cowboy, because you're gonna be sitting down. Come on. Now, isn't that enough? You stay out of this, Heath. Uh, oh, Kilbane. I'm gonna get you with one of these if it's the last thing I do. Next cowboy? No, thanks. Rafferty, I've had it for one day. I think I've had plenty. I don't know about you. for Stockton Cowboys, huh, Kilbane? Eh? Take it easy. It, it was a fluke. I knew this would happen. I knew it. Those two fights with Sam Driscoll. That pounded bad. Get, get out of the way, will you? No, no, take it easy, Jack. Just take it easy. Here we go. I, I gotta finish the fight. He sent you over a lucky one. No, 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 no. I quit. Besides, you, you had me out of my feet. No, don't worry about me, Cowboy. Just hit my bad side. Turn out the lights for a minute. It'll go away. I don't want to intrude in your business, mister, but I think he better be checked by a doctor. Right. Me? Yeah, you. I've been fighting since I was 15 years old. Oh, watch it. Hey! Get up! Now, we're going down to see Dr. Marar. He's just down the street. Now, I don't want any nose. Okay. Now, me, you get back to the ranch. I'll be there as soon as I see he's all right. Right. Doc, I tell you, I can see as good as anything. Oh, well, you just quiet down, stop arguing. Now, follow my hand with your eyes. No, 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 don't. Don't move your head. Oh. 
How much has he been hit on that side? Who knows? Jack's had over a hundred fights. Could always take a punch. No, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know, Rafferty? I'm thinking of Sam Driscoll. He could hurt you bad. He never saw the day. Now, let me explain what has happened. A blood clot is very probably formed and is causing pressure there inside your head. Well, how come I feel okay, then? Listen, I could go out there right now and... Shut uh, up! Who's the doctor here, him or you? I know how I feel. If it's a blood clot, there's every chance it'll go away and you'll be as good as ever. But I'm telling you this. If you ever fight and get hit there, that blood clot can move, not dissolve. and you'll be dead. How do you know? Can you see inside my head? No, Mr. Kilbane, I can't. But I know something about concussion. We'll cancel the fight. Cancel a fight? After I put up the guarantee, every red cent I've got. Jack, it makes no difference. You've got to quit now, right now. Shut up, Rafferty. Quit talking like an old lady. There's a man in San Francisco who knows more about these concussions. Get him. Oh, wait a minute. I got no money to pay for any doctor from San Francisco. I'll pay for it. Get him. In a pig's eye, you will. I pay my own bills. Now, get out of the way. Jack, you've got to listen. Look, I know we're broke, but quitting's better than putting your life on the line. Think of Matty and Johnny. I'm fighting Sam Driscoll. And you're fighting him alone. I'm taking the next train back to New York. I'll have no part of you getting yourself killed. Okay, Rafferty. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go walk out on me. I, I don't need you. But you're looking at the picture of your pa in there, ain't you? Yeah. <laughs> Is he in? Pop's sleeping. He's oh. in training right now. And... Hello. Oh. I'm Mrs. Kilbane. Oh, Mrs. Kilbane. Well, may I speak to you a minute, please? Uh, I'm Nick Barkley. I'm the man responsible for your husband being hurt this afternoon. Hurt? Yes. He didn't tell me anything. Oh, I, I see. Well, uh, well... Uh, well, won't you come in? Johnny, I, I want you to take this downstairs and get a newspaper for your father for when he wakes up. All right, well. well where was he hurt? In the left-hand side of his head, where Driscoll hit him before. The doctor says if he fights again, well... Well, he could be hurt pretty badly. Oh, dear God. Well, you've got to make him quit. And if you're worried about the guarantee money you put up, there is a way of getting that back, you know. I, my brother's a lawyer, and... I'm not looking for a lawyer, mister. Well, the doctor said you're in no condition to fight. I'm in good enough condition to throw you out of that window. Now get out of here. Jack, honey, you didn't tell me anything about getting hurt. If a doctor told you to quit, then Mary, what? Mary, since we're talking over family business in front of strangers, I'll make you a promise. After I beat Driscoll, I'll quit. Now, you can put Johnny in school like you wanted to, and we'll settle down. But don't ask me to cancel this fight. Now, what good is that going to do if what the doctor says is true, and you get killed? I've had over 140 fights. Nobody's killed me yet. And one lousy punch almost did it today, and it was my lousy punch. And I don't happen to like that. Well, what do you want me to do, crawl on my belly? Ask her brother for a job at a saloon tending bar? You seem to be more worried about yourself and your wife and your son. You take on a lot of nerve, cowboy. Just because you landed one lucky punch. All right. All right. Well, you take a job. That is, if you're not afraid of work. Jack, listen to him, please. We got an empty house on the ranch. You can live there and earn a very decent wage. Oh, I'm not a ranch hand. Well, at least take it until you decide. You don't have to give up anything. You can go on training. Now, ranch work is the greatest builder in the world. 
Keep you really in shape. Jack, please. If you want to give it up later, you can go back to what you want to do. You can go back to fighting. But give it a try. Hi, Pop. I brought you the paper. Say, you ought to hear all the people in town talking about you. The way you fought Sailor Haggerty and Sullivan and... I'll, uh... I'll be expecting you, huh? Ma'am? What's going on, Pop? Well, we're going to go live on a ranch for a while, so... Gobain, why don't you step up on your horse? we got to pull some cattle out of the hills, all right? All right. Uh, Kilbane. Uh, Kilbane. Uh, Kilbane. Oh, oh, oh. You might have a little more luck if you try the other side here. Uh, this side over here. Oh. Blacksmith shop, see if he needs some help. I think he does. All right? Uh, right over there. to it. Tell you what, take this and clean the hoof off and get it ready for trim. Go ahead. Turn around the other way and then tap him behind the leg. He'll lift it. I may tap him on the nose. Uh, you stand still, Plaster. It's got to be done. It's got to be done. Jack, I should have told you you have to hobble a cow before you milk her. Well, I'm not a milkmaid, Nick Barkley, nor a farmhand. I'm a fighter. No, 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 wait a minute. There's no reason to get upset. Cows are like some fighters, you know. You gotta outwit them. Now, you're not gonna let a cow beat Jack Coldane, now, are you? Not without a good fight. Oh, hello, Mrs. Barclay. 
Henry, Mr. Kilbane. Hardly. I hope your family likes pears. Our trees were loaded this year. Do you know we put up almost a hundred quarts? Oh, that's very kind of you, but I don't have any fruit jars. Let me bring you some. Oh, thank you. We don't need it, Mrs. Barkley. I mean, you've made one small mistake. We're not charity cases. Jack, please. Well, I mean, living in this house rent-free is bad enough, but if it's, if it's pears Mary's after, she can wait till after the fight and buy them. Oh, Mr. Kilbane, you don't understand what neighbors mean to each other and what they do for each other in this part of the country, but perhaps you haven't lived out here long enough. Mrs. Barkley, everything my family owns, I earned with ease. I don't owe anybody anything, and I've never taken any handouts. And I'm not about to change. Well, I'm sorry if I offended you. Mary? Mrs. Barkley, thank you. Jack, how can you be so bullheaded? You better sit down and eat your breakfast, son. Uh, you too. You're not going to grow if you don't eat. You're not sick, are you? Johnny? What's the matter with you? Pop, how come you hang around here doing ranch work? Are you going to quit the fight? <laughs> Johnny, that's... Where'd you get such a notion? I rode in town with Mr. Barkley, and some of the people were talking. They said you were going to. <laughs> You're all mixed up, son. Well, that's the silliest story I ever heard. Me quit? <laughs> Jack, if you don't tell him, I will. Tell him what? About the doctor. What doctor, Pop? Mary, you don't know what you're talking about. Jack, the doctor said... Mary, he wasn't serious. Only a woman wouldn't know he was joking. Pop, is there something wrong? Oh, no, no. The doctor said something about my head, but he was kidding. As a matter of fact, I'm in such good shape, he was going to put a bet on me himself. Now, you eat your breakfast. Well, I, uh, I guess I better be getting to work. You're lying to Johnny, to me, to yourself. Mary, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with me. Jack, is that the truth? Oh, Jack, don't be wrong. Please. Oh, please don't be wrong. a job loading wagons. What are they paying you? Two bits a day? <laughs> <laughs> Sweeping out barns and milking cows. Finally found your proper calling, eh, Jack? <laughs> <laughs> well, I see you still got the same big mouth, haven't you, Driscoll? 
Hey, I hear you're backing out of the fight. Puts them out. Are you scared? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, those jobs are so hard to find. Maybe I can put a word in for you. Sweeping out saloons. <laughs> <laughs> we can put your kid out in the street dancing for pennies. <laughs> Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! There's no money in street fighting. Well, what about it, Kilbane? You're gonna back out? All right, Jack. Come on, I just want to get you riled up now. Come on. Well, that's where you were wrong, Driscoll. You're gonna get all the fights you can stomach. Where's Flaherty, his manager? He had to leave town. <laughs> Come on, everybody. The drinks are on me. Let him go. <laughs> Ah, come on, forget it. Come on. Well, we better get our stuff. We're gonna be moving back into town. We got a lot of training to do. fork. Matter of fact, you can't see anything from that side now, can you? Get out of here with your tricks, will you? I got a fight to train for. Jack, if there was a chance to get out of this, would you take it? Not a what? Don't play dumb with me. You're not in this thing to win. You're in this to get your guarantee money back. Because you don't have the train fare to send your wife and boy back to New York. I'm fighting because I'm a fighter. All right. If there was a chance to get that guarantee money back, would you take it? Driscoll would see me dead before he'd give me a nickel. Huh? Well, what about widow's money for Mary, in case that uh, blood clot all of a sudden decides to break loose? Get out of here. You, you got nothing to say to me. All right, all right. One way to get that guarantee money back is that someone shows up in that ring, right? Yeah, that's right. All right. I'll fight Sam Driscoll. You? Yeah, me. You don't belong in the same ring with him, cowboy. More than you do. You still got that blind side. Well, just don't worry about me, eh? Come on, come on, get in the buggy, son. Jack, why don't you stay here and train? We can fix up a little place in the barn. Besides, your wife Mary and your son here, they like the house pretty well, don't they? Keep your favors and get out of my way. Now, now, wait a minute. You need a manager, you need someone to train with, and I'll do it for Rafferty's 10%, all right? You? A uh, fight manager? Mm-hmm. Oh, now, come on. I've, I've followed the fight game since I was, well, as small as this one here. And, uh... Well, besides, where else could you find such a great sparring partner, huh? huh? Well? Tying yourself up. That's no, fine with me. Soak your hands in salt water? Yeah, Brian, thick enough to pickle a hog. 
One split knuckle would be the end of it, you know. Yeah, don't worry about that. All right, start punching this bag. Make believe it's Driscoll. Keep punching till I tell you to quit. Go ahead. Want a break, stranger? Yeah, I'll break. Never thought we'd be going out of the ranching business, did you, Heath? You lose a good foreman, things are bound to go right downhill. I mean, like if he gets interested in other things so that the South Pasture Well doesn't get dug out and the busted fencing stays busted. Yeah. Nine and 15. Very sloppy, but effective. Funny a man raised on a ranch suddenly loses interest in it. Yeah, you'd think managing a ranch would be enough managing for any man. Very funny, boys. So I'm going into the prize fight business. Well, now, don't you think for one minute that I can't handle this ranch, too? And I wouldn't worry too much about Kilbane, either. His doctor is getting him an instrument that uh, can tell whether the blood clot is still there. Nick, we're not worried about the ranch or Kilbane. We're worried about you, Nick. Maybe you're getting in too deep. And if something happens to Kilbane, you're going to blame yourself. Anyway, all we're trying to tell you is that no matter how deep you get, we're in it with you all the way. Well, now, why didn't you say that before? We just did. Step aside. <laughs> What were you doing? Uh, uh, reflexes. Uh, I was seeing if I was uh, dropping my shoulder or carrying my chin too high. Well, why were you moving your hand in front of your face? Well, I told you, Mary, reflexes. Is that all? Uh, honey, Nick's waiting to take me to the Jack. fight. I don't want you to fight Driscoll. Mary, I told you, it's for you and Johnny. It's the last time. I don't want you taking chances with your life. You tell Nick to call the fight off. Don't ask that. I am asking it. And if you don't, I'm going to take Johnny and go to my sister's in Sacramento. Mary, I... I, I mean it. Mary, I haven't got time to argue. But, but you'll see. I'll take Driscoll inside of five rounds. Jack. You know I love you. Then you'll stay? No. Should be back pretty soon. How do you feel? Oh, I feel fine. Well, you couldn't be sharper than right now. Just remember, keep that left up. Protect that blind spot. Huh? I won't forget. Tell me something. How smart would you say Driscoll was? Driscoll? Mm-hmm. Well, he's dumber than I am. How do you mean? he can kick his grandmother upstairs. <laughs> well, now, if he thought you had a cut, a bruise, or a weak spot, would he go after it? Like a shark smelling blood. Huh. Now, uh, where do you think you could take a pounding the best? The rib cage, huh? All right, now let's just give him a target. I got some stuff in the barn I use for horses that'll raise the most convincing black and blue mark you ever saw. You're a smart cowboy. You might even make a fight manager. <laughs> Be right back. Show him you're scared of that left side, and he's going to pound you there all day. 
Oh, Jack was telling me that uh, Driscoll is like a shark. So we figured we'd give him a little bait. <laughs> was this part of the strategy? Uh-huh. Come on, I'll tell you about it on the way. Come in. I was just about to have some coffee. Oh, no, no thank you. You see, I, I just came to say goodbye. Johnny and I are leaving for Sacramento on the 9 o'clock train. You're leaving before the fight? Oh, yes. Well, can you tell me what's happened? Well, I, I have a sister who lives in Sacramento. Oh, I've been promising to see her. Well, show Johnny off. Oh, she's never seen Johnny. He, he was born in New York. All right, that's not true. I'm leaving Jack. He thinks more of fighting than he does of Johnny and me. Oh, no, Mary, that's not true. It is. Mrs. Barkley, I can't take it anymore. Fighting means more to him than his own life. And I am no good at waiting. Waiting for one good punch from Sam Driscoll or some other fighter. I want to be far away. Well, Mary, distance isn't going to put you far away from him. Why don't you wait until after the fight and have a talk with him and then... No, I've talked. He's made his decision and I've made mine. Mary, if... No, please, Mrs. Barkley. the train station. Looks like she got sense enough to leave a loser. All right, Ben, come to the center. Kill Ben. You've got an injury. There'll be no contest, no fight, and all bets off. Looks much worse than it is. Come on, let's go. What are you trying to do, back out, Kill Bane? Just watch me. Let's take a look. So it's all right. Come on, let's go. Well, all right. You fellas know the rules of like ever boxing in this country. I want a good, honest, clean fight. I want no gouging in the eyes, no butting with the head, and no blows beneath the belt line. Any questions? Yeah, he fouled me in Tona Poor Nevada. You gonna watch that? Anyone commits a foul should be disqualified and the purse will be forfeited. Now shake hands, go back to your corners. When the bell rings, come out fighting. Don't try to make any false claims on me. Hey! hey. contest is scheduled for 25 three-minute rounds and one-minute rest periods. Under the Marquis of Queensby rules, introducing in this corner, Jack Kilbane. <laughs> and his opponent, Sam Driscoll. <laughs>
get him now. Jack, it's all over. His manager's gonna realize what that right did to you. Do you hear me? Do you understand me, Jack? It's all over. His head. The weak spot is in his head, Sam. You got that? Bang him on the left side of the head. You got him punchy. Work on those ribs. Keep him low. No, no, no. That's where he wants it. Get him on the left side of the head. The left side. Got it? I'm throwing in the towel. what he needs. To get himself killed, is that what he needs? He'll be dead, and for no other reason than his stubborn pride. Well, what would you do, Mrs. Barkley? I don't know. I don't know if I'd act any different. I just don't know. But I think it's wrong. You see, Mary, if you take away a man's pride, he might as well be dead. Your place is with him, Mary, no matter what. Jack, listen to me. Every time he throws a right at your blind side, he tips it. He steps out and back with his right foot. Now, Heath and I will tell you when to throw your right, because we'll see it coming. All right, now. When we say now, you step back and let go with the right. You got that now. And they got it. Sure, do you understand that we say, now, you step back and let go with the right. Your fighter's got to answer the bell, mister, do you hear me? Remember that. Now, step back, let go with the right. Go on. Come on, Archie. I'll give you a bite of these. Six. 
you came back, Mary. If you hadn't, it all would have meant nothing. Oh, I could never leave you, Jack. Johnny and I will always be with you. You know, I've been thinking. As long as a man has some brains left, he ought to be able to use them for something else besides a target. You don't mind if I don't go on a fight for the championship, do you? No. Oh, Jack. I guess I'm just bullheaded, honey. But it was a decision I had to make myself. Well, they've got me some money now. I guess I'll try something else. What, Pop? Well, I don't know. But we'll do all right, son. You ever think about being a farmer? Farmer? Uh-huh. Put about half of that stubbornness of yours into being a farmer, and you might wind up being a very prosperous man. Say, isn't that place down by Frenchman's Creek still available? Sure is. And from what they're asking, it could be quite a bargain. Well, maybe you got something there, cowboy. See you later. Hey, Jim. Tooth again. Oh. Come on, I'll buy you a beer. Whiskey. <laughs> oh. Sky pilots turn up every spring. That's a nice boy. Yeah. How long will you be? Oh, not long. I'm just going to ID notes for a dress fitting. Do you have any money? How much? Five dollars. Five dollars? How do you keep that awful thing? What's that? That's for good luck. Ever since I've been carrying that, I haven't been bitten by a single rattlesnake. time you looked in your neighbor's eye and said, I love you, brother? And when was the last time you raised your eyes and said, I aim to see those pearly gates and sit on that golden throne? When was that? Two months ago? Six months ago? A year? Oh, I see we have our work cut out for us in this sin-filled town. Revival meeting. Tomorrow night, Swanson's Grove, 7.30. You tell your neighbors. 7.30 tomorrow night. Here you are, sister. You won't regret it. Come on out there with your friends. Tell your neighbors, 7.30, Swanson Stroke. There you are, brother. Well, now, what do we got here? My 
brother here is a deaf mute. I'm lame. We heard about your miracles. Uh, heal us, brother love. Drive out our devils, wash us clean. Well, now, my sons, I can't cure you all by myself. It'll take the combined prayers of all your good neighbors here, but I guarantee you, you come to my meeting tomorrow night and you'll leave walking, and he'll leave singing joyous hosannas. Hallelujah, brothers. Hallelujah, brother. Young lady. Oh, your piety and serenity falls fair upon my eyes. I'd like to offer you a special invitation. Sister... Audra Barclay. Yes. I'm Brother Love. I've heard about your family. They're quite prominent in these parts. You could lend an awful lot to our crusade, Sister Audra. Well, I... Uh... 7.30 tomorrow night, Swanson's Grove. Hallelujah, Sister. Remarkable. Remarkable. Come on, Audra, let's go and try your dress on. Howdy, fellas. You were due in yesterday. What held you up? A convert, brother, a convert. Soft she was, like a mouse's ear. <laughs> Old oh, Mace here's been limping and gawking around here for two days. Set you up pretty good. You figuring on getting your foot caught with another convert? I saw you talking up a pretty young one over there. Now, look, fellas, by ourselves, we could hit this town for about $15 and a dozen eggs. Now, we get the right people behind us, and we can get fat. Now, that girl I was talking to was Audra Barkley, the richest family in the valley. And we need their support. And I intend to get it. With the girl. Have I missed one yet? Hallelujah, brothers. Hallelujah. Cleave under the word. Remember the lilies of the valley, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, brother. Hallelujah. Swanson's Road. See you there, brother. Hallelujah. So this is what it looks like. Devil's Den, Lucifer's Lair, Satan's Sanctum Sanctorum, and all you poor unfortunates who abide herein. You come to Beelzebub's banquet hall to seek forgetfulness in the waters of Lethe. For shame. And you, you swill Belial's bills drained from the blackest slough on the river Styx. And I suppose you come to the altar of the arch fiend because you were cast such a poor lot. Well, when was the last time you asked him for a better one, brother? I wouldn't do that. Hallelujah, brother. And what have we here? The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with precious and golden gems. And in her hand, she had a golden cup full of abomination. Why? For love? No, no, no. It's the devil's arms you'll find. 
Love. 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 What's a man without love? I'll tell you. Two hundred pounds of meat walking around. As much meat as in a yearling, a big buck. Same amount of meat as in four big dogs or ten little ones. Same amount of meat as in one hundred rabbits or two hundred sleek fat rats. That's what a man is without love, doomed to eternal damnation. And that goes for gossipers, coveters, actors, and people who dance on Sunday. Jack of clubs. Jack of diamonds. Jack of hearts. Jack of spades. Notice, brothers, not one of them will look you straight in the eye. Could you look a man straight in the eye if you were condemning his immortal soul to the eternal fires? Hallelujah, brothers. Meeting tomorrow night. Swanson's Grove, 7.30. Bring your faith with you. Give my best to the family. I will. You can count on that dress being ready by Thursday. Or would you want it in time to wait at Swanson's Grove? Thursday will be fine. Don't you believe brother love can heal people? Oh, I believe in miracles, but I'm not sure Brother Love is the one to perform them. I suppose not. Mother. Over here, dear. I just wanted to tell Audra goodbye. Goodbye, darling. When will we see you again? I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Come on, dear. Let's, let's go inside. Sister, may I help you with those, please? Thank you. They're really no trouble. No, no, no. Please, please. Which way are you going? Toward the saloon. Sister Audra. My buggy's parked out front, Brother Love. Well, I should have known that. Sister Audra. I sincerely hope that you and your fine family will attend our meeting tomorrow night. You see, it's very, it's very important to me. Very important to you? Well, yes. You see, if, uh, if people of quality attend, it has a very positive effect on the less materially fortunate. Well, I'll mention it to my family. Well, may I mention it myself? Certainly. My brother's right behind you. Excuse me, brother. Yes, I think we've had the pleasure before. I was just telling your lovely sister that I was looking forward to meeting your fine family tomorrow morning. Hallelujah, brother. I didn't invite him. Hallelujah, sister. But you must understand, Mr. Love, we have our own faith. I don't proselyte constituents, Mrs. Barclay. I merely steal souls from the devil. In place of worship, I deliver them to his immaterial. You have no church. I have no edifice, but I have a church. You see, there's so much evil in the world that I, uh, well, I, I feel it would be unfair for me to stay in just one place. More tea? Uh, no, 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 thank you. Well, there have been some amazing healings at some of my meetings, Mrs. Barclay. I sincerely hope you'll come and witness the power of prayer in action. The power of prayer? Oh, yes. Only recently I was accosted by by two poor souls, one a lame and one a mute, and tonight at the meeting, I'm going to heal them. Oh, it's happened on more than one occasion, and it's a sight to see. Can I count on you? I'm afraid that would be impossible. Huh. Well, that's a pity. I, I, I was kind of looking forward to seeing Sister Audra this morning. Is she here? No, this is her day at the orphanage. She asked me to extend her apologies. Well, how like Sister Audra to be involved in good works. Did I pass that on the way down here? Was that near the old mill? Mm-hmm. That's it. Mother! I'm ready to go. I've got a buggy all set. Say, whose horse is that out uh, there? Uh, this is my son, Nick. Nick, this is Brother Love. Brother Love? Just a 
Man of the cloth, bringing his bright word to the benighted territory. Uh-huh. Is that your horse, Asai? Yes, the black one. I noticed a rifle in the saddle scabbard. Uh, Brother, I fight the devil with any means at hand. I see. I think I came at a bad time. I'll see my own way out. Uh, Mrs. Barkley? What time did you say Sister Audra left for the orphanage? About 20 minutes ago. Oh, good, good. Then maybe I'll pass her on the way back. If I can do your sister. Brother? Well, now, what did he want? The sustenance of the Barclay prayers. I think. what I'd call a pretty fast team. When somebody shoots us. Oh, probably some kids in a lark up in the hills. Thank you for helping me. Well, after you stood me up, I should let you keep right on going. You really didn't give me much of a chance to explain yesterday. Anyway, I, I appreciate what you just did. Well, I'm happy to be of service. Perhaps I, can, uh, perhaps I can see you to your destination. Oh, that won't be necessary. I'm just going to the orphanage. Once a week, the members of my group take two children on a picnic. And I never thought of orphans as being lucky. Well, you're welcome to join us. Uh, there's plenty of food here. Oh, no, no, I didn't mean to suggest it. Well, really, I made more than enough. Anyway, it's the least I can do to repay you. Sister Audra, sweetness sits on your shoulders like a silken scarf. I'll get my horse. I'll follow behind you. Deep. Yeah, I don't care if I don't eat for a week. He says he's full, but he's got four pieces of chicken in his pocket. Those box in the trash, you would too. Now, you both know you get plenty to eat at the orphanage. Mr. Audra, you're spoiling the game. I'll tell you what. First one to find me a bird's nest with an egg in it gets a brand new shiny dime. Now, how's that? All right. Good. Good. Neatly done, brother. Well, after a hearty meal, it helps the system to work off a little energy. Like you're doing? Oh. You see, the nice thing about giving advice is that no one is bound to take it, especially me. You said I was spoiling their game. Sister Audra, in an orphanage, everyone has exactly the same thing as everyone else. And it's very important to have one more thing, something special. I had a clock. It didn't work, but nobody else had one. You were raised in an orphanage? Kansas City. They found me in the front stoop in an apple crate with a great big sign over my chest that said, Love. I didn't know it was a name or a request, so they... They called me Benevolent Love. With Ben for short. That's a lovely story. Before I got the call, you'd take a water tank full of the blood of the lamb to cleanse these roads. I've sinned far more than I can ever make up for, but I figure the inferno might not be quite so hot if I can keep a few people from going there. Never told anybody that before. I don't know why 
I told you, I guess it's just been on my mind for so long. Well, I better get going. Wait. That was something more easily left than said. I, I admire you for bringing it up. Well, then you forgive me, sister. I don't think I'm... Well, you come to my meeting tonight and you'll see how I make up for it. You will be there, won't you? I'll be there. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's for sure. Well, with Adrian being blind, I can't afford to pass up a chance. Is that all the love you have in your hearts? Oh, come on. Now I've sought out converts at bull baitings and cockfights, and I've heard more enthusiasm for a grizzly and a Rhode Island red. <laughs> now that's more like it. My brothers, sisters, look down on the ground around you. You see a rock there? Pick it up. I don't care how big it is, just you pick it up. Want to get a rock? Now, I'm a sinner. I am a black-hearted, hateful, sinning breaker of the commandments, and I deserve to be lapidated. I deserve to be stoned to death, and I carry out for it. So now you throw those rocks at the sinner and let him who is without sin cast the first stone. No stones. Not one stone. Well, we all know what we are. And now I'm going to tell you what we're going to do about it. And he who does not pledge himself will sweat in limbo, singe in purgatory, and burn forever in the fires of Hades with nothing to slake his thirst save the abomination of the river Styx. Amen. <laughs> hold it, hold it, hold it, Flock. Oh, the best is yet to come. Now let the blind and the cursed and the lame and the halt come forward. This is the time to come forth and be cleansed. Five will get you ten. There's a cure coming. And how has evil made itself manifest in you, brother? I'm lame. My brother's mute. Heal me. Please, heal me. Do you believe you can be healed, brother? I believe. I believe. Brothers, sisters, give this man your love. Give this man your hearts, your prayers, your faith. You 
feel it, brother? Is it there? It is, brother. Walk tall, brother. Walk tall and straight. Walk. No. I can't. Yes, you can. Now throw away those supports. I can't. I can't. I can't. You can. You can. You can. Walk. Walk. <laughs> a leg that's never been off the ground. I dragged it in back of me for 18 years like a, like a snake's tail. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. I'm in your service for the rest of my life. Now, heal my brother Flood, brother love. Please heal him. Deaf and mute all the days of his life. Where is he, brother? And in this day shall the deaf hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of the darkness. And the mute shall speak in tongues known to mankind. Do you feel it, brother? Is the power of goodness about to burst through your veins? Come out of him! How long has he been that way? Since birth. Well, then it just might take a little longer. Brothers, sisters, we'll have another special meeting, same time tomorrow night. And I'll heal this man, or I'll sell my soul to the devil. Now, I'm sorry, brothers, sisters, but I feel I only had half the prayers of the audience tonight. Now, you come back here tomorrow night underneath these same stars. Can you do that? I'll have him here. And I guarantee you he'll walk out of here singing and answering your spoken questions. Now! This heretofore lame man will pass amongst you, and you give in accordance with what you've received. If you hold out your hand in a neighborly way and say, share it with me, brother, it's a beautiful day. Life is worth living, so whatever you do, let a little love that brotherly love shine through. Brotherly love, brotherly love. That's your brother. A dime? I gave as I received. You saw what he did tonight. And I never saw it done better. Well, you're just mad because you didn't want to come in the first place. Do you believe all that? I don't know. Sister Roger? Brother Barkley? I sincerely hope you enjoyed the meeting. Well, yes, it, it was most enlightening. Can you stay for a cup of coffee? Well... It's a long way home, Mr. Love. We'd better be going. Good night. Good night. Brother Love? May I help you, sister? The sermon was beautiful. Well, hallelujah, sister. Hoped it was. Of course, I don't understand that uh, second man not being healed. You see, it, it, it don't happen too often. Then you do have a lot of curates? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Maine to California. But you look pretty healthy to me. Oh, I am. But I have a little daughter who doesn't see. Oh. And you'd like me to pluck the scales from her eyes. 
Sit down, will you, sister? Well, did we sting him pretty good tonight? $22.73. Well, now, I'd expect that from the Song of Solomon and Psalms, but when I really let loose in the Book of Revelations, I expect at least twice that much. Now, who'd we really get to? Well, the Barclay girl gave $10. That woman who just left gave five. The woman who just left is going to contribute $500. And Sister Audra just might be good for around 3000 now, give me five dollars out of that plate. What for? For the orphanage. What orphanage? The charity of Sister Audra's. You just don't go around collecting three thousand dollars without investing some goodwill. What about her brother? You think you can sell him, too? He looks like he'd be trouble. Well, he don't worry me none. I've got an equalizer. <laughs> Well, new dress? Yes. Ardenell's all excited. Well, it must be some dress. It's not about the dress. Brother Love's going to try to help Adrian. Oh, a little girl? Mm-hmm. Well, I hope he can. How much? What do you mean? How much did he clip her for? She didn't give him any money. Well, good for her. But she's thinking about giving him $500. It's her money. Why are you so against him? Well, you saw him heal that man. I thought it was most impressive. Well, did you ever see that lame man around town before? No, but I happened to know that he heard of Brother Love's work and came here to find him. Look, sis, three years ago, a man like that wanted me to show for him. He was going to remove a scar from my face. All I had to do was put a little glue right along the cheekbone, and he was going to heal me, take it right off. Are you saying that Brother Love healed a man who wasn't even sick? Well, why don't you go back tomorrow night and see him heal another one? I don't believe it. Why don't you ask him? Good morning, Sister Audra. I was just thinking about you, Brother Love. Well, as kindly, I hope, as I have been thinking about you. That man you cured last night. You never saw him before you came to town. Sister Audra, I do believe the devil has gained your ear. Well, it's just that I've heard that uh, some traveling preachers hire... Well, they use... Shills. Shills, I believe, is the word you're searching for. Yes, yes, there are those abroad who employ that unholy practice, but, uh, well, I thought you had more faith in me. I'm disappointed. Our collection last night was less than $23. Now, would I practice fraud for such a meager amount? Would you do it for $500? Why that amount specifically? I didn't know Bowles is a friend. Oh, yes. The widow with the blind child. Well, I, I did agree to try to help, but I set no sum. She happened to mention she had that amount, but it's of no concern of mine. What does pain me, though, is the fact that you so quickly mark me as a thief. A thief I am. Look at my plunder. A wagon. Two dray animals, a razor, a Bible, and an extra suit of clothes. Now, if this community is of so little faith that it, it reads chicanery into my offer of help, then I assure you I shall never again see the widow nor her blind child. And I don't seek vengeance against the child. It's just that if you don't have faith in me, if these people don't have faith in me, then I can't do anything anyway. Now, just say the word. Say the word, Sister Audra, and I'll move on. If there's a chance for that little girl, I... I can't take the responsibility of denying it to her. If there's a chance? Do you really think there's just a chance that there's a power bigger than any mere human being? I'm sorry. I almost forgot what I came here for. Here, for the orphanage. I always give 10% of my collections to a worthwhile local cause. Now I feel even guiltier. No, no. Take it. It's 
for the children, and the children should be happy. I know they'll appreciate it. Look, I'll, I'll be going back to the orphanage in a while. Why don't you meet me there and, and make this gift yourself? Well, that would... Uh, that would please me greatly. Go. Fine. Just fine. Oh, but you don't sound all shot up with enthusiasm. You want me to be jumping up and down? We spent the morning together. <laughs> but no three thousand dollars. Might take a little time. Time? But Mace, uh, do you get the idea that old Ben might have stepped in his own bear trap? Would be. You notice the way there's honey dripping from his eyes when he looks at it? That's enough of that. Well, you ain't getting no permanent ideas about that girl. No, Ben wouldn't do that. He ain't the marrying kind. You know what I was thinking? I was thinking maybe I just should get rid of both of you. Hey. Hey, now. We is just joshing. Yeah. So don't get your back hairs up. I don't want to hear any more about that girl. All right, all, all right, anything you say, but what about the widow? Uh, $500 ain't 3000 but we could use it about now. You're right, I'll go and see him. May as well harvest the fruit while it's ripe. Now, that's the Benny boy I've learned to love and revere. You just lay off that bottle and don't get into any trouble till I get back with the money, right? <laughs> He offered not to see Idnell again. Well, that's when you should have taken him up, sent him packing. He just might be able to help Adrian. I, I couldn't take the responsibility. Who am I to deny her what might be her last chance? All right, all right, you got conned. And you talked to him for two hours this morning and you got reconned. Double talked. Nick, you met him. Mm-hmm. What did you think? Oh, I... I was impressed. But then again, con men always impress me. Well, I uh, have some fence mending to do. I'll be back later. You're both impossible. I'm just trying to soften the ground, break your fall. Don't bother. She didn't need a bite. Too busy asking our advice and not taking it. <laughs> Faith does wonderful things. Through people like Brother Love. No. But is there any way we can prove it? Well, I could ride over there and ask him. You have to use all the water? There's plenty more down in the creek. Don't come any closer. This man's straddling a rattlesnake. Ah! Oh, you sure got your voice back in a hurry. Looks like Brother Love isn't the only one who can work miracles around here. Brother Love healed this man last night after the meeting. That's, that's right. Why didn't you jump when I fired? Well, you see, I... What do you want here? Where is Brother Love? 
is on an errand. But when he gets back, I want you all out of here. Well, maybe we just don't want to leave. Well, you want to stay permanently? We have a nice, warm jail. My, my, Brother Mace. Ain't he got a long nose? Oh, he sure does, Brother Flood. And what happens to long noses? They get broke. <laughs> Are you sure the deaf mute talked? Well, his last lines were the effect that long noses got broke, and he was almost right. Well, what are we going to do? Look, I am through doing. Now, you get in touch with your friend Idenell and tell her to keep her purse buttoned. Don't do that. Well, the love ain't gonna like it. Well, it can't be helped. When he gets back with the money, we just better forget about the meeting tonight and keep moving. Well, where is he? I want to talk to him right now. Well, who's that? So you can talk. You know who I'm talking about, Brother Love. He's on an errand, sister. To steal $500 from a friend of mine. Well, he won't get it. Where you going? Come here! I, I mean, hold it! Hold it! What are you going to do with her? Well, we just keep her here till Love comes back with the money. Uh, uh, but there ain't much chance of her contributing to the building fund now. <laughs> What do you mean? Ben had eyes for her. You want to tangle with him? Oh, oh. All right. All right, what happened? Keep your hand away from your side. I don't want to see that pop-out gun. I asked you what happened. She rode into camp here. Said some bad things about you. She was going to tell that widow. She hit my gun hand. It was an accident. You can't do it, Ben. You can't. Now, look. Just give me my share of the money. I'll ride out of here. Your share of the money. I'll give you your share of a bullet. Now, you take him and you get out of here. And if I ever see either of you again, I'll kill you. Now, get out. Her brother's on to us. Uh, you stay around and they'll hang you. Get out. We'll, we'll get him. Get out! Look at that. Honestly, 
Just a crease. I'll clean that up. Where? Take it easy. Take it easy now. Everything's under control. Why is it so dark? Under the sun. sure she said she was coming here? Yes, she wanted to talk to you about Brother Love. Brother Love? Victoria, for the first time in my life, I have some hope. I think he can cure Adrian. Audra does, too. Not anymore. I'm afraid Brother Love isn't all he claims to be. I'm very sorry. Did you give him any money? Yes. Well, we'll try to get it back for you. Are you sure that he's... Yes, he's a confidence man. I should have known that. Oh, thanks, Victoria. I'll be all right. Well, do you think she went straight to Swanson's Grove? I think we'd better find out. According to the good book, Gospel of St. Mark. According to the good book. I don't guess there's much I can tell you about the good book. You wrote it. But you got another book. You get one with my name on it. Well, I suppose you must have around a thousand pages just where I used your name in vain. And there's all the rest of it, too. So you got a score. I got a thousand dollars. That's all I got in the whole world. It's yours. If you spare this girl. It's all yours, every penny. I'll even change my ways. I'll confess everything. If you restore her sight. Oh, God, you got less reason to listen to me than anybody else in the whole world. But there's nowhere else I can go now. I tried to out Holly. you. I can't. Right out, slick you. So I guess I think maybe it's time that you and I had a a heart to heart talk. I think that's what prayer really is, anyway. You see, if I was asking something for me, well, you could hit me with a bolt of lightning, and I'd be the last one to blame you. But I'm not. I'm asking for her, sweet, innocent girl. And she's made in the image and likeness of you, and I, I just can't picture a blind God. You know, one thing I never did lie about. I always told my flock that I was a miserable sinner. Now, you've got to have that in the book, too, right? Come on. Help me. Help her. Artra. 
Mrs. Barkley, let me explain it. Look, I know what you're thinking, but I... No, let go of me. I'm all right, Mother, I'm all right. Audra. Your face, just look at it. You can see. You prayed, you really prayed. And he heard me, he listened to me. And he just won himself the best feeling preacher this side of the big river. And I think he knew it all the time. Well, do you want the truth, or do you want them to spoil you for a day or so? I'm afraid they already suspect. Well, you suffered from a temporary hysterical ophthalmic malfunction. You mean temporarily blind, right? And extremely fortunate. I've known of cases where the condition lasted for months, even years, particularly with a wound such as yours. Then you might consider it a minor miracle. The words minor and miracle should never be used in the same sentence. I'll remember that. Well, come by my office in a couple of days. May I? May I come in? I think she's been expecting you, but don't stay too long. Audra, how radiant you look. Thank you. The doctor says I'm fine. Oh, thank God. And I mean that. It's very funny. Yesterday it would have taken me about five minutes to say that. A lie takes an awful lot of words. The truth takes very few. How about you? Well, I had a little meeting with the sheriff. I don't think I gained the convert, but he's not going to press charges. You'll be moving on. Yes. When I'm coming back, I want to build a church in Swanson's Grove. I made a promise. And I have an awful lot to make up for. How big a church? Oh, I'd say about 20 cubits by 30 cubits. Audra, how big is a cubit? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Hallelujah, sister. Hallelujah, brother. Brotherly love in a dark and dreary world There's just not enough of Brotherly love, neighborly love There's an awful lot of good can come from Brotherly love, there's an awful lot of good can come from Brotherly love <laughs> Mr. Alderson isn't here yet, is he? No, senorita. Senor Gerald only left a few moments ago to pick him up at the station. Thank you. Yes, senorita. Not a sound, amigo. Not one peep. No, senor. Put him in the tack room and tie him up. Mother. 
Oh, the candelabras are lovely. Give Silas the credit. He's been cleaning them all morning. Silas, they're beautiful. Thank you, Miss Audra. Did you get everything? Well, they were out of Rodoli and brandy, but they said this would be just as good. Is this all right, Mrs. Bartner? Perfect. Just perfect, Silas. Thank you. Now, let's see. Did we forget anything? The flowers would be nice. I'll cut some first from the garden. Thank you. Is there anything else I can do for you, Mother? No, but you better get yourself dressed. Who are you? Easy, ma'am. What do you want? I have the regretful duty, ma'am, to inform you that we're here to execute a sentence of death. the way fine animals were meant to be seen. Running free. Nothing touching them except the sun and God's own clean air. Magnificent. I trust the Army realizes we expect a magnificent price for them, General. <laughs> well, if they're all like that, we'll be doing business. But it isn't General anymore. I'm just a civilian now, you know. Just a civilian working for the Army Purchasing Department. I stand corrected. Oh, you see that lead stallion there? Mm-hmm. Now, that one is really going to cost you. Nick raised it. Oh, ho. Nick still loves horses, huh? That he does. I remember just before the Battle of Shiloh, I called a staff meeting. Everybody got there on time except my aide. You know where that brother of yours was? Doctoring a sick horse. When I called him on the carpet about it later, he said, General, you're the one who'll be ordering me into trouble, but it's the horse I'm riding will get me out of it. <laughs> That's Nick, all right. Yes, sir. <laughs> ah, it's too bad he's away. I know he'll be sorry he missed seeing you. Oh, well. I'd probably just be boring him with an old man's memories. The war years are best forgotten anyway, you know? I suppose so. But it's good to remember that we won something important. Mm hmm? We lost something important, too, though. The South was part of us, you know. When we killed their men, burnt their fields, gutted their homes, we destroyed part of ourselves as well. Well, we should be home soon. Did you get our horses out of sight? Yeah, I hid them in the grove. Good. Barkley and Alderson will be here soon. As soon as you get rid of this rig, get up the road and keep a lookout. Right.
No one upstairs. I guess we got them all. Take a look out back. Don't you think it's about time you explained what you're doing here? Let me know as soon as you see them. Ladies, I'm afraid I'm going to have to put you someplace for safekeeping. Safekeeping from what? What about the attic? Should be all right. Come on, ladies. Mother, don't go with him. I have no intention of going any place, not until I've had an explanation. Oh, please don't make it difficult for yourself. I'll try not to inconvenience you any more than necessary. The reason for all this will become apparent in good time. Sorry. Mrs. Barclay, my patience is not unlimited. Neither is mine. <laughs> well, I'm afraid uh, two of you Barclay women is a little bit too much for even me to handle. So I guess I'll have to make it easy on myself. Ladies, if you don't mind. Curtis, come with me. I want you to stay with him. I'm sorry to be so uninformative, but if you were to know too much at this point, you'd only be needlessly worried. Needless? You said you were here to kill someone. Oh, no, 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 no. I did not say kill. My exact words were to execute a sentence of death. An execution many years overdue. Who passed this sentence? We did. You won't get away with it. We employ a lot of men on this ranch. You're all the way in a trail drive. Friends drop by. I'll be there bad luck. Indeed. Tell me to tie him up. Oh, I don't think that'll be necessary. My brother Jared will be home soon. That, my dear, is what we're counting on. you on a nice tall bourbon while I find out where everybody is. Let's do it. Good afternoon, Mr. Barkley. Good afternoon. Uh, you'll forgive me, gentlemen, but I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Uh, no, you haven't. But at the risk of sounding inhospitable, may I ask what it is you're doing here? Where's my family? The ladies are, um, in another part of the house. Where in the house? In the attic. With a man. A man with a gun. A gun that may go off unless you do exactly as you're told. What do you want here? Your gun, Tanner. What is this, boys? A robbery? 
No, it's not. Then why are you victimizing this man's family? Victimizing? Oh, that's an interesting word. Sound familiar to any of you? Don't you recognize me? Should I? Yes. We've met before? We've met. Where? He wants to know where. Tell him where we've met, Barreau. In the bleeding ruin you made of a whole town, Mayville. You were in my command? Your command, you filthy Yankee. We was your victims. Ah, uh, no. You come riding in with your soldiers, hollering, crazy drunk, burning homes, shooting anything that moved. And what moved, you Yankee trash? Civilians, women and old men, and us here let out of the army for wounds. Now do you remember? Now do you know what we come here for? You're hanging. It's eight years overdue. Donnelly, go outside and pick out a good strong tree. sons. They're all supposed to be away on a cattle drive. They're alone. <laughs> Come on, Scott. <laughs> well, will you tell me what's the bad blame funny you've been snickering and carrying on all the way home? <laughs> Sally Ann? <laughs> Sally Ann what? Oh, oh, she's, gonna, she's gonna be awfully disappointed. <laughs> Well, so far, it's hilarious. You want to tell me more? Well, look at all the stuff she gave me here. Look. Look at this muffler. Holy oh, look at this. Look. Stillman snake repellent. The cattle drover's best friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 Sally Ann must expect me to be fighting off snakes with my left hand, fighting off a grizzly bear with my right, and snow up to my eyeballs in the middle of a cattle stampede. <laughs> Well, you could go back out on the trail and suffer a little bit for Sally Ann's sake. Oh, now, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is it my fault that cattle buyer came a hundred miles down that trail to take the herd off our hands, huh? Well, you could have turned him down and told him you were all prepared to go the hundred miles or bust. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I just got an idea. Hey, come here. Supposing that we don't tell her that the herd was bought out from under us, and that way we get to stay away a few more days. <laughs> what are you going to do with your snake bat repellent? Well, now I just might drink it. Smells pretty good. Here, try it. Oh, Nick, is that supposed to repel a snake or charm it? <laughs> See you, go. Diego! No where in tarnation is he. Diego! <clears throat> oh, ah, that's funny. What? Oh, no, isn't that a fine thing? When you come back from a bone-crushing trail drive, you'd expect there'd be somebody here to put away your horses. Diego! Diego! Nick, you're gonna start an earthquake. Maybe he's up by the house. Come on, I'm starved. <laughs> Welcome home, gentlemen. Inside, join the party.
How much longer are you going to keep us here? Ma'am? I asked you how much longer... You know, I bet this old guitar still has a lot of music left in it. May I ask uh, who played it? I did. Oh? Did it give you a lot of enjoyment, miss? <laughs> yeah, you see, it's still got a lot of music left in it. If I had one more string, I could play you a right nice tune. Are you a musician? No, but uh, sometimes I'd like to earn a living making music. You do have a feeling for it. And that's rather strange, having such sensitivity, and yet being able to commit cold-blooded murder. Nobody said anything about murder. Yes, that's right. That's right. Let me see, what was the word you used? Uh, uh, execution, that's the word, execution. Now, that's a word the military might use. The war, General Alderson. Does this have something to do... You'll know sooner enough what we came here to do. Miss, maybe you'd like to try coaxing some music out of this. No, thank you. I, I don't really play very well. Besides, it's awfully warm in here. Would you mind opening a window, please? Yes, ma'am. Uh, please, miss, I hate to have to hurt you. Oh, let go! Let go! I'm sorry. Now, if you'll both please sit down. And I would be obliged, miss, if you wouldn't do that again. We're here, and here we're gonna stay. Till the job's done. That's insane. I was in his command. The general did not order that attack. Sure. He wasn't even there. We imagined it all. It happened, but not the way you Give think. Give me that. We'll him off. Why don't you let the man talk? There's nothing to say. He did what he did, now he'll die for it. What do you lose by letting him talk? A few minutes? Isn't a man's life worth a few minutes? He isn't a man, he's a snake. Now, we swore we'd bring him to justice, now let's do it! Justice! You call this justice? You keep out of it! I say he's innocent. And of all the proof you've got is your word that you were there, then my proof is just as good as yours. And I say he's innocent. Uh, explain that. I told you, I was in his command. Well, more than that, I was an aide to him. In Mabel. His aid. Oh, isn't that interesting? A lot of civilians were killed that night, I know. It was awful, I know that too. And I also know that we lived to be a thousand years old. We'd never forget that night. And he did everything he could to stop it. Nick, they're not interested in the truth. Is that right? Well, mister, that's just what you've got. The truth. We have to talk. We won't be long. Burrow. Sit down, General. Jared, why didn't you tell me he was coming here? All I knew is that the Army was sending somebody out to buy our horses, Nick. I didn't know it was your ex-commanding general until he got here. Well, anyway, when, when all this is over, we'll, we'll show you a real proper welcome, huh? I've thought about you often, Nick, with the very best of good feelings, I may say. It's a shame sometimes it takes a war to draw men together. They share a deep experience, and then they drift apart. I've looked forward to seeing you again very much. Very much. I'm sure all this will be all right. Of course it will. And now that you're through with your talk, you're going to let him go and clear out of here? Mr. Barkley, we're not wanton killers. We are not the men you would make us out. We are compelled by duty. Bro here is a horse breeder. Mm-hmm. Tanner and Donnelly are farmers. I'm a school teacher. 
These are occupations we know we can never return to after today. Occupations we love, but are willing to abandon if that's the price we have to pay in order to avenge the lives of 16 innocent human beings. You, uh, you said before that uh, you served under him. Yes. That night at Mayville, you were there? I was. What uh, rank did you Lieutenant. Hold? Lieutenant? Ah, well, then you had uh, command responsibility. I did. And after the shooting started and he arrived in town... I arrived with him. Well... Well, I guess we just need another rope. Now, you're out of your mind. You're gonna have to kill us all. You know that, don't you? Don't try to stop us. That'd be foolish. This man and your brother killed 16 innocent men, women, and children. We killed no one. Facts are facts. And your facts could be wrong. That is possible, isn't it? We were there, mister. So were they. You say that all you're interested in is justice. Then why not let a court of law decide whether these men are telling the truth or not? No, 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 we can't risk that. But if they're guilty, they'll be punished by law. In a Yankee court? Now, let me tell you something about Yankee courts. There was rumors against this man back when it first happened. There was an investigation. Do you know what happened? Nothing. Nothing! They do it again. They let him go. There ain't gonna be no trial. Are you afraid of letting them tell their side of the story? All right, then. Since you've taken the law into your own hands, why not be the judge and jury, too? But hear them out. A trial, huh? With uh, us as judge and jury. You'd have nothing to lose. All right, Mr. Barkley, a trial it shall be. We, the jury, find the defendants guilty of murder. As judge, I sentence them to be hanged. <laughs> well, I guess that's just about what I would expect from men that aren't killers. Men who really want justice. Trial would be a waste of time. They're guilty as sin. Prove it. Macklin, he's trying to stall us. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, Macklin. You say you want a trial, huh? All right, we'll give them a trial. We'll find them just as guilty and have the added pleasure of seeing them sweat. Counselor. You have 30 minutes to consult with your clients. In view of the proposed sentence, I suggest you make the most of the time allotted. How big a town was Mayville? A couple of hundred people. How many men? Hardly a one, except you, me, Tanner, Donnelly, mustered out of the army for bad wounds. All the Grote Able men were off with Beauregard down to Charlottesville. So the town posed no threat. It had neither war materials, crops, strategic roads, not even a potentially dangerous manpower reserve to justify an enemy raid. All we had was land. And all we had to put into the land was our dead. Fine southern dead, that is, not back shooting Yankees. All right, Mr. Barkley. Sit down, Mr. Barreau. I have a few questions I'd like to ask. What do you mean? I already told you. Mr. Barkley wants to cross-examine. I agreed that he might. Sit down. Now, we're not going to discuss the tragedy that happened that night. We're merely going to try and determine once and for all who was responsible for it. Now, you say it was General Alderson. He commanded the division. It was his men. How many men? Well, in a division? Were sent into town that night. A full division, a half, a quarter. How many? Well, I, I don't know exactly. But there was enough to do what they planned. But not a full division. I ain't sure. Make sure. It wouldn't make no difference. Then you shouldn't mind answering the question. All right, it was only some. Now, what does that get you? A great deal. If he planned to destroy the town. That's all, Mr. Burrow. 
Nick, come on over here and sit down. I'll answer whatever you got to ask right from here. Nick! Oh, uh, Fib. This is all a bad joke. Now, you were a lieutenant in General Alderson's division. Yes. You were his aide. I was. And you were with him in Mayville. I was. Did you have any unusual duties that night? I was duty officer. The duties of a duty officer, uh, post sentries, answer messages, uh, acting commander for the night. You was right in on it with him, weren't you, boy? A duty officer has nothing to do with planning strategy. He merely takes charge of unit security for the night. That's right. Then what is your point? Just this. That in any ordinary bivouac, the duty officer takes charge from sundown until sunup. And during that time, he's given an hour-by-hour -hour report of everything that happens in that unit. So better than anyone, Lieutenant Barkley was in a position to know what was or was not ordered. Go on. Now, Nick, as duty officer, you made your rounds that night. That's right. You were there when the men left for town. I was. How many men were there? Platoon-sized scouting detail, 38 men. Isn't a scouting detail usually squad strength, 12 men? Alderson sent 26 more men than were needed. Why? This wasn't a regular scouting detail. Obviously. Tell him why, Nick. Oh, well, we were deep in the heart of the South. Most of the outfit was made up of pretty green troops. Besides, we had snipers taking pot shots at us all while we were there. So it was for the defense of the men themselves that so large a detail was sent. No other reason. And you're prepared to swear that there was no attack ordered that night? I am. Why shouldn't he? He'll hang if he don't. Macklin. We agreed, Burrow, that he'll be given a chance. Let him talk. A chance? I didn't agree to that. I agreed to let him sweat. Any of you hear anything said about a chance? Was nothing said about a chance. Then why go on with this at all? Now you're getting the idea, boy. Look, we're just wasting time. We came here to do a killing. Let's get on with it. Are you going to listen to your bloodthirsty friend, or do we continue with this trial? We continue with the trial. I'm afraid I'm needed downstairs. Which means, unfortunately, we're gonna have to tie you up. I know it really isn't necessary, but it's more for your benefit than it is ours. Otherwise, you might be tempted to try something foolish. And not too tight, Tanner. Now, I hope this won't be too uncomfortable, but I shouldn't be too long. What is your occupation, Mr. Curtis? I'm a photographer. And that night, after it was all over, you took a number of pictures, didn't you? Pictures of some of the victims who lay dead or wounded. That's right. Did you bring those pictures with you? Yes, I did. I wanted to show them to the general before we put the noose around him. Well, you can show him now. Deny these. I don't think this is necessary. We're not arguing the fact that innocent people were killed that night. I thought I made that clear. But we are arguing whether or not General Alderson was responsible. All right, let's take that point up. Mr. Curtis, you were a member of the Home Guard that night, weren't you? That's right. And whether it was a division or half a division of Yankee soldiers, you saw what they did. And what they did was murder. That's right, too, isn't it? That's what it was. Murder. They murdered my mother and two sisters. Did you see General Alderson there that night? Yes, I did. Killing and butchering with the rest of his men. You couldn't have mistaken him? No. No, I'd never forget his face. Are there any questions you'd like to ask, Counselor? Yes, but not right now. Thank you.
try something. Established that personnel of your command were in the town of Mayville on the night in question, and that those soldiers committed the killings. Is that correct? The question was, General, 16 civilians were killed. They were murdered by your soldiers, yes or no? I wouldn't exactly say murdered. 16 innocent people were slaughtered by your soldiers, yes or no? Yes. General, did you directly or indirectly cause or order that to happen? No, I did not. I want you to know, sir, that I believe you. And if it's humanly possible, we'll make them believe you, too. How? By placing the blame where it properly belongs, with the reckless, terrified, drunken misfits of that patrol. Yes? Now, were you able to identify the guilty that night? Not without difficulty. Small pockets of trouble broke out by the stables, the town hall. Then they became a mob. But later they were identified. And what happened to them? They were court-martialed. Then the guilty were punished. They were court-martialed. And there you have the simple, uncluttered truth. The guilty were identified and punished. What more do you want? Uh, you haven't asked General Alderson how they were punished. Will you answer that? Were they hanged? Were they sent to prison for 30 years? Were they treated in a manner to correspond with the severity of their crime? That was out of my hands. Uh, the investigation revealed that there were indeed Confederate sympathizers in the area. In itself, not an astounding conclusion in that Mayville is a town in the heart of the South. And anyone from a suckling babe of two months to a wrinkled grandmother of 90 would fit that description. Because of the sympathizers, however, the federal troops were understandably nervous. So that when they killed the civilians, they did so believing it an execution of duty against armed resistance. After the trial, they were let go. It's all right, Audrey. It's all right. Oh. Mother, you're hurting yourself. Oh. Help! Alderson gave a sworn deposition, saying the mistake might legitimately be due to the unfamiliar locale and the relative inexperience of the men. Without that, the court would have convicted. Oh, but there's more, still more. One piece that binds the whole ugly package together. It's true the detail preceded you into town, but you followed soon after, didn't you? To take part, to enjoy the killing. That's not so. You mean you weren't there? I was there, I tried to stop it. Stop it, how? I ordered them to break off immediately and return to bivouac. Did they? No. They were like animals. Drunken, green, frightened troops. They thought they were under attack. 
But they were in general, were they? No, they were not. In fact, there were no Confederate soldiers in the area. No. So then why were they firing? I told you why. You told us lies. You ordered it. You planned it. You rode hell for leather when you heard it had started so that you could be there to enjoy it. And your aide over there, he came screaming right in there with no. And man, you swired it. You were seen firing. We saw you. But not at civilians. Not at civilians. But there was no enemy to oppose. I know. Kill him. Kill him now. Who were you firing at if not civilians? At soldiers. At my own soldiers. It was the only way they wouldn't stop. I had to fire at my own men. I say you're a liar, Alderson. A dirty, filthy liar! Hear me out. Lies! Lies! I can prove it. Give me a chance to tell you the rest. I didn't hate those people. Do you know why I delayed outside Mayville? Do you? Perot, Donnelly, after him. You, get over there. Tanner, get some rope. I want these two tied. As for you, Counselor, I hope you won't be as foolish as your brother. I'm a very good shot. All right. Let's proceed. smoke down there. I suppose we should, thank you. It's not necessary. It's our fault you're here. Check the other side of the house. Barkley, your brother won't get far. As soon as we catch him, we'll proceed with justice. Don't reach for the guns, gentlemen. Unless you want me to prove a man can get just as dead shot as hung. Drop it, Macklin, and get over there. Come on, Jared, untie me. As soon as I get untied, Mr. Macklin, I'm gonna show you a little justice, Barkley style. Everything all right down there? Ought to heard a gunshot outside. He's... There we are, lady. Well, it might have been a pleasure, Mr. Barkley. But as it is, I think we'd better get back to business. The gun, please.
Give it to him, Heath. Nick. Do it. Nick, he's gonna hang you. Thank you. Thank you. That was a very wise decision. Mr. Curtis, you can take the ladies back up now. I trust you're seeing to their comfort. All right, let's go. We didn't have any choice, Heath. He jumped us from the roof, took us by surprise. It was a nice try, Mr. Barkley, but it's the last chance you're going to get. Tanner, if they so much as scratch, you know what to do. It's time. Listen to me. Can't you even die like a man, or do we have to carry you? I tell you, you're making a mistake. Sure. Now, are you walking, or do we carry you? You don't know what you're doing. Donnelly! Moreau, take him! No! I tell you, no, you don't know what you're doing! No! 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 Blaine! No, I tell you! No! No! You can follow his example, if you wish. Or walk out like a man. Macklin, you go through with this and you're a dead man, I swear it. Move! your general first. I tell you, I was on your side. <laughs> You're confused, General. It was a blue uniform you did your killing in. The start of the war, I and hundreds like me, officers in the Federal Army, offered our swords to the South. Sure. And then you all went back to the Yankee Army as spies, huh? Not all, but some, and I was one of them. Tell me, Yankee, the people you murdered that night in Mayville, before they died, did they make up wild tales like this, too? You're making a mistake, believe me. Believe what? If it was true, you would have told the Southern people you say you fought for and cleared the stink off your name. I couldn't. Want to do this myself. The North won. I would have been shot for a spy. Lion Yankee. Let's get this over with. No, no, no. Wait a minute. Macklin, you don't believe him, do you? It's true. What's true? That a Confederate ordered the slaughter of one of his own towns? Don't you understand I was a Confederate spy in the uniform of a Union general? We're wasting time listening to these lies. It's true. And the war was lost. We realized that, but out of that defeat, we could still have our victory. We're talking about the murder of a town. There can be no excuse for that. There can be, and there was. Hang him! No! I tell you, I was on your side. I tell you, there was much more at stake than the lives of those people. I gave... I gave the order for the slaughter at Mayville. No. But for a reason. A reason. You couldn't have done that. I was there. I was your aide. I would have known. You couldn't have done it. I gave the order to Colonel Brandt. He was killed in the action. I ordered that attack because I had to appear a dedicated Union general. The slaughter at Mayville was to conceal the work I was doing for your side, for our side, because even then, we were planning the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. I could prove that. March 16th, no, 17th. It was a tavern, I forget the name, just outside Macon, Tennessee. You can check it. You can check it. I was with Booth when he plotted the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. My brother Jonas was with me, he can tell you. Ask her, tell her. Ask her. <laughs> Is that what you wanted to hear? Yes, that's it. And I'm sorry. I'm truly sorry. But it had to be this way. These men are federal officers. They were never gonna hang you, Alderson. All we wanted was your confession. 
We... Yes, I was part of it. I'm sorry, Nick. You're sorry. Believe me, Nick. I know what you've been through. But there was no other way. I couldn't tell you. A trick. All this a trick? Yes. An elaborate trick. But it worked. May heaven forgive me. It worked. Get the prisoner ready to return to Washington. If you knew how many times I wanted to call the whole thing off, despite the orders from Washington. We understand, Jaron. The last time I'll come home two days early. I don't know whether I should slap you or kiss you. Well, I would prefer a kiss. I bet you would. <sighs> it will take Nick a little while, but he'll cool down. explain to you enough how really vital this all was. Well, now, maybe you can explain to me why you put the family through a night of... Well, I don't know what you'd call it. You were supposed to be away five days. I didn't know you and Heath would come back. You were never intended to be involved. Now, forget me. Forget me. What about Mother? Huh? An author? Those men were under strict orders that if Mother and Audrey were in danger at any time, they were to call the whole thing off. The fire was an accident. Oh, so that makes it all all right. Maybe not. But if the government approached you, Nick, and said, here's a man who's responsible for wiping out an innocent town, a man we know helped plan the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. We know it, but can't prove it without your help. If they came to you, Nick, and said that, what would you do? Probably the same thing. <sighs> What's that smell? Snake repel. What? Snake repel. I'm Sally Ann Snake repel, and she gave it to me for the drive. But she made a very big mistake. A big mistake. The only snake I've seen in the past three days has been wearing my tie.